everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have a fun video for you featuring all the yarn shops that I visited in the greater Philadelphia region. So about one or two weekends ago now I participated in the greater Philly yarn crawl. So these are the really cute tote bags that they have where there was basically a challenge to visit 16 yarn shops in the greater Philadelphia region over a four day period. And I participated and I was able to visit all 16. And along the way, what I thought would be really fun is to create a video showcasing each one of the yarn shops. So what you're gonna see in this video is you're gonna see all 16 of the yarn shops that participated in the yarn crawl. And for each one, I tried to showcase a little bit of what area they're located in, what the outside of the shop looks like, what types of yarn they offer, and a quick little overview of the inside of the shop. So each video snippet for each yarn shop is fairly short. Hopefully this video doesn't end up being too long. And the way I've broken it down is there is a map that goes along with it. So you go find this map down in the video description below. And it features, first I'm gonna do the center city shops. So there's five of those total. Then I'm gonna move up to the northern suburbs and do those shops. And then lastly, I'm gonna do the Western suburbs. So the video will be broken down into three subcategories. And then with each, within each one of those subcategories, you can find the specific yarn shops listed in the description box down below. You'll also find the specific video breakpoints. That way, if you want to, you can fast forward or rewind to see a specific yarn shop. Now, I thought this would be a great resource either for Philly area knitters who are looking to try out a new crafting shop and also for people visiting Philadelphia. So you can see all the amazing shops that Philadelphia has to offer. Now, if there is one that you love, be sure to share down in the comments down below so that everyone can keep an eye out and try to visit that shop. We're gonna be starting off, as I just mentioned, in Center City, Philadelphia. And there's gonna be five different shops that we visit along this portion. So on the map, these are each one of those blue icons. Now, the way we're gonna organize these is we're gonna go from southmost to northmost. So I'm gonna be starting off all the way down in the south at Weaver House. Then I'll move up to South Philly Yarn and Craft, then Loop, then Yarn For ya, and then lastly, Modest Transitions. So let's start it off with Weaver House. Now Weaver House is located in the BOK or Bach building. Someone who is more familiar with this area will have to tell me whether it's the letters or the word. And what it is, is it's an incredibly unique space and it used to be a former technical high school. Now it's a workspace for more than 200 makers and businesses. So I entered into the Dudley Street entrance at 821 Dudley Street. And then I made my way up to the second floor to find Weaver House. So Weaver House was located in space 203. And they had nice signs guiding me as to how to find it because of the yarn crawl this weekend. Once inside, the Weaver House is an incredibly bright and airy space. And it's one of the few shops that I'm gonna be showing along this, these 16 shops that are primarily yarn for weaving, as their name says. So they had tons of different yarns and fibers and books and accessories. So I'm just gonna show you a few different angles within the shop here. And I believe they do also have a separate space within the building where they have the actual looms and they teach classes. They also sell and feature looms by three different brands, which are Kromsky, Ashford, and Schacht. Now, a few of the things that caught my eye as a hand knitter in this shop was I thought all these dyes that you could use were really interesting and cool in case you were ever interested in dyeing fiber. They also had so many amazing book resources in the shop as well. And lastly, they definitely did have a few yarns that could be used for hand knitting. And I ended up picking up three balls of their pom-pom yarn. I loved the bright blue colorway and I'm excited to either make a pair of mittens, something like that, or either a headband out of this yarn. Going a little further north, our next stop is South Philly Yarn and Craft. On the day we were visiting, they had a pop-up shop for a local dog and cat treat company outside called Two Cats and a Dog. And inside they had yarn spinning demos by the Philadelphia Guild of Hand Weavers. Any one of these different um, pop-up shops or other makers I mentioned, I'll be sure to link in the video description down below. Inside, they have a seating area off to the side where people can sit and knit, and then they also have a large table where they teach classes. 
Some of the brands of yarn they sell at the shop include Kremke Yarns, Kelborn Woolens, Symphony Yarns, Geektastic Fibers, and Dye Mad Yarns. They also had adorable knitting accessories and little cross-stitch patterns as well. One of my personal favorite things to knit is socks. So I ended up picking up some of the Geektastic Fibers. That's one brand I've never knit with before, so I was very excited. And it is this pink skein that I'm showing you right now. The next two shops I'm gonna be showing are much closer to Center City, Philadelphia. And the first up is Loop Yarns, located on South Street. I have some bias towards this shop as I used to work there and teach classes when I lived in Center City. And of all these shops, this is probably the one I actually got the least video footage of, just because I got here the Saturday morning of the yarn crawl, and many other people had the same idea, so it was very crowded inside on the morning I visited. Loop features many different yarn brands at a variety of different price points, including Brooklyn Tweed, Malabrigo, Noro, Emma's Yarn, Feederbrook Farms, and they also have their own line of yarns called Loop, and I have used the Loop yarns in a few of my previous videos. They also have a huge selection of different accessories from Coco Knits and Katrinkles. Now before I show you the pop-up events that they were having, I just wanted to highlight real quick what I ended up getting from Loop Yarns. I love knitting socks, as you'll probably see throughout this video, so I ended up getting a thing of gradient sock yarn, and then also some new cable needles, because I seem to have misplaced my old ones, from Coco Knits. Now beside the main storefront that you walk into, Loop also actually has the next storefront over, where they teach classes and they also hold pop-up events, such as their fall festival. On the day I visited, they were featuring um, repurposed quilts by Mabel Quilts. Now I did want to hop in here real quick and post my voiceover. And you may have noticed that in my video introduction, I was wearing one of those two pullovers. So I did end up purchasing this one and I love it so much. I especially love the pocket. So I'm very happy with my purchase from Mabel. The other vendor that was featured this day were stitch markers from All Stitch Studio. And I made sure to pick up some of these as well as stitch markers is something I am constantly losing and running out of. The next yarn shop up is Yarnforia, also located in that center city region, west of Loop Yarn on a very scenic street called Pine Street. Now Yarnforia, that day I visited, was having a pop-up from a jewelry company called Cork and Charm, and they had yarn themed jewelry that they were featuring. Walking into the shop, you can see the wide variety of yarns and bases that Yarnforia offers. So just to name a few that they have available, there's Malabrigo, Juniper Moon Farms, Anzula Luxury Fibers, Misty Alpaca, and many others. On the day I visited, they were showcasing yarns by a Canadian dyer, Essence of Autumn. And one of these skeins shown here actually ends up being the one I purchased from Yarnforia this day. Now, one of the unique things about this shop that I unfortunately wasn't able to get video footage of is that there is a patio out of the back of the shop. So unfortunately, the back of the shop was very crowded on the day I visited, but there was a cute outside patio here as well. You can kind of see where it is in this next shot I'm filming, where it's those big windows and door towards the back of the shop. Now, here is a close-up of the yarn I ended up purchasing from Yarnforia. Essence of Autumn, and this one is the Prairie Worsted Base in the colorway Sea Glass. And I'll be sure again to link all these brands down below. Now for the last shop in the Center City region, or what I would consider the Center City region, we are heading north to the final shop, which is in Fishtown. And this shop is called Modest Transitions. Now it's located on one of the main streets in Fishtown, and it is beautiful inside and out, this shop. So I love the way that you'll notice in a second when we go inside that they have brought the nature indoors. Now they are a natural dye and textile studio. So you'll notice once we go within the shop that they have a wide variety of products. 
from materials to dye with, yarn that can be used for hand knitting, crochet, weaving. They also have looms and a dye studio in the back. So this first wall I'm showcasing here was a lot of the kits and book resources for dyeing, as well as you can see in the jars over to the side, they have materials that you can use to dye with. In terms of the yarn brands they offer, they have a wide variety from Kelborn Woolens to Malabrigo to Quince & Co. In the middle room, they had more accessories and also looms. And towards the back here, you can see this is where the natural dye studio is. Now from Modest Transitions, I ended up purchasing a yarn minder, which I've never had one of these before and I'm really curious to try. So what it does is it you basically put a skein of yarn on it or a ball of yarn, and then it allows the ball of yarn to spin freely as you're traveling. The day I visited the shop, the dyer behind Abelita Fiber Company was having a trunk show to feature her naturally dyed yarns and ceramics. I was really drawn to that one red single skate of yarn, which if I remember correctly, she said she dyed with cochineal. So that was really interesting to learn more about. Now we're gonna be heading out of the main city center of Philadelphia out into the suburbs. And we're gonna start with the northern suburbs. So you'll notice all these green dots on the map. There are quite a few shops in the northern suburbs here. So we're gonna go through all of those. And first up, again, we're gonna go from south to north. So we are gonna start with the first one on the list, Wild Hand. Wild Hand is located in the Mount Airy neighborhood of Philadelphia. And walking up to Wild Hand, you're gonna notice the community feel of the shop, starting with the rocking chairs and benches seated outside. Once inside, you're gonna be greeted with a large selection of fiber goods, and they are related to quite a different few number of crafts within the shop. One of my favorite areas is actually the button selection, and they offer a unique selection of buttons from textile gardens. Next up for the yarn, they offer a large selection of yarn from both larger manufacturers to indie dyers, including brands such as Spin Cycle Yarns, The Wandering Flock, Blue Sky Fibers, and Harrisville Designs. There's also a large assortment of accessories, both for knit and crochet, and other crafts. So they have things like darning looms, mini looms, in the other room that I'll show you next, they have felting supplies, so a large variety. And they are broken up into two separate rooms. So there's that front room that we first walked into, and then towards the back, there's the second room here, which features more accessories and supplies for other crafting types. While at Wild Hand, I ended up purchasing four of the Daisy Buttons. I thought these were just such a fun, cute little size. And then also one of their shop exclusive colorways with Spin Cycle Yarns, and this is in the Plump Base. On the day I visited the shop, they were featuring a trunk show by Jersey City-based textile designer, Kira Wiggins, who had beautiful spun yarns and bats available for purchase. Just up the street from Wild Hand, about a mile or so away, is Kelborn Woolens, which you may have noticed is a Philadelphia-based yarn brand that is offered at many of the other shops I'm showing in this video. They have a brick and mortar yarn shop in the Mount Airy neighborhood of Philadelphia, right next to their warehouse. In the shop, they sell their own brand, Kelborn Woolens, and a few other selected brands that they sell and distribute to other shops, including Navia, Kremke Soul Wool, and Studio Misha and Puff. They also have a large selection of silk wool wash. It was a beautiful 70 degree day in Philadelphia when I was visiting, and that inspired me to purchase some of Kelborn Woolen's Mojave yarn. And this yarn is a blend of cotton and linen. I thought this would make a great yarn for a tank top this summer. And then also on this day, I'm not sure if it's every day or not, but they were also giving away tote bags. And I thought the tote bag was really cute as well as little graph paper notebooks. 
Going a bit further north is Stitch Central, which is located in Glenside. The size of the shop is amazing, and I think this was the largest across any of the shops I'm going to show you in this video. They have a parking lot entrance to the side of the building, so that's great. And part of what makes the shop so large that you'll see in this video is that they have both sewing and fabric, as well as yarn and fibers. So it's part half and half, I'd say. And in the front of the shop, there's two main areas. There is a sitting area off to one side. And then on the opposite side, they have sewing machines where people were sitting and sewing. And I'm guessing that's where they teach classes as well. I was surprised to learn after visiting the shop that they had actually only been open in this location for about a week. And the shop had recently moved to this new location. It was amazing how homey it was inside. Since this is primarily a knitting and yarn channel, I'll focus on that. Some of the brands this store carries includes Madeline Tosh, Noro, Rowan, Kate May Fiber Company, and many more. A short distance away from Stitch Central is Love to Knit and More. Now, because of construction, your GPS may take you to a shopping center with an Outback Steakhouse. The Love to Knit location is actually around the back of that building. There's a small strip mall, so it's located in there. So you kind of have to go around the Outback Steakhouse building. Once you go inside, you're gonna see the huge selection of yarns available in the shop. And we met the owner, Ellen, while we were in the shop, and she explained that she opened Love to Knit and More to support her philanthropic mission, Therapeutic Crafters on Call. So a brief excerpt of what that is, Therapeutic Crafters on Call was founded to work with a diverse group that would benefit from learning craft skills. You can read more about it on the Love to Knit website, which I'll link down below. On the day I visited, they had a trunk show featuring Cozy Color Works yarn. In addition to the trunk show, they have a huge variety of yarns and brands available, including Circulo, which they're our dealer for, Hedgehog Fibers, Ella Ray, Juniper Moon Farms, and Rowan, just to include a few. From the shop, I picked up a gorgeous skein of Wonderland yarn, Silk Twist. What I really liked about this yarn was how you could see the silk within the fiber and how the silk versus the wool took the dye differently. And this is the colorway, End of the Wood. Next up, we have United Stitches, located in North Wales, Pennsylvania. Now this was an incredibly picturesque location for a yarn shop, and it was nice and cute and cozy inside. Again, this store has large parking areas on either side of the shop. And once you enter into the shop, you're greeted with the yarns that they're offering. So they feature brands such as Plymouth Yarns and Kelborn Woolens. And on the day I visited, they had a trunk show from Cape May Fiber Company. A cool part about the shop as well is that they also offer teas and coffees that you can either use to gift or at home. They also had a large table on the opposite side of the shop over towards where I'm showing right now, where they teach knitting and crochet classes. Driving a bit further north, you'll arrive at Echo Valley Fiber, located in Newtown, PA. And I must say this was such a scenic store to drive to and also arrive at. It's located in a historical 1840s building and there's a large parking area off to the side. I loved how cozy this yarn store was and it seemed like I was always finding something new around each corner. Another thing that made this store really unique was that the shelves were a combination of books and yarn and not knitting books, but nonfiction books to read. So that was really interesting to look through. A few of the brands carried in the shop include Lore, Knit Collage, Farmer's Daughter Fiber, Kelborn Woolens, and The Fiber Company. 
while in store, I ended up purchasing this sock set where I can knit two pair or a pair of socks at the same time. And what cracked me up about this is when I get home, I realized that the yarn I purchased from Loop Yarns is almost the exact same kind of base colorways there. So I thought that was pretty funny. Next up is Forever Yarn in Doylestown. Doylestown has a charming downtown and there's lots of different shops to look through and restaurants to eat at. In terms of yarn, Forever Yarn is a high-end yarn lover's dream with yarns including La Bienemy, Olan Mills, Cake, Little Fox, Ritual Dyes, just to name a few. The shop is broken up into two rooms, so the room I'm currently filming in would be the front room closest to the door. And that has the large majority of the yarn in it, including all the La Bienemy. And then as you head back towards the back of the store, there's a large table in the second room that people are knitting around, and also more yarn, of course. Now, while I was in the shop, I found this cake yarn on the back table that I was really interested in, but I wasn't sure what project would best suit this yarn. So what happened is the owner actually helped me brainstorm potential ideas for the project and other yarns that it could pair well with. And I ended up purchasing two skeins of the cake yarn and one skein of the La Bienemy. And hopefully I'll be able to knit a cute little summer t-shirt out of it. So I'm pretty excited for this project. The northernmost store that I'm going to feature in this video is Twist Knitting and Spinning. And after visiting, we should really add weaving to that list as well. So there's a large parking area to the front of the store. And once you step inside, you're greeted by multiple rooms of knitting supplies. And it's divided up essentially by room. So I'll go through it essentially as I walk through the store here. So first we have all the yarn and knitting accessories or crochet accessories. A few of the brands of yarn available include Jaggerspin, Brocco, Madeline Tosh, Cascade, and Brooklyn Tweed, just to name a few. All the way in the back of the store, they have their weaving and loom room. So if you're interested in weaving, I would definitely check out this shop, as well as one of the first shops I mentioned in this video, Weaver House in Center City. Those were the two that had a lot of weaving supplies. There was also a room that had fiber for spinning as well, if you're interested in spinning. Lastly, towards the front of the shop, there's another room off to the side that features a large table that people can sit around and knit, as well as a lot of the cotton yarns that you typically see for children's clothes or baby projects. I was really excited at this shop to pick up a pair of sock blockers. It's something I have never owned before, but I've always been on the lookout for because I feel like they'll be very useful to use, especially in my sock knitting videos. Now we're going to be moving over to the Western suburbs and showcasing three more shops. Again, just going from southernmost to northmost. So we're going to be starting with Home Zone down in Media. Home Zone is located in the heart of downtown media with lots of shops and restaurants around to explore. There is also a little trolley that goes up Main Street in media, so that's really fun to watch as well. Home Zone is a combo sewing and fiber shop. When you first walk into the store, you're welcomed by an assortment of yarns, including yarns from dyers such as Madeline Tosh, Earth Yarns, King Fibers, and many more. They also have a wide selection of kits that you can use for crafting, both for adults and for kids as well. I thought this gritty kit was really adorable. <laughs> I kind of wanted it. Towards the back of the shop, you're going to find all the fabric. The trunk show they were featuring the day I visited was for a local media dyer, Bloodstone Yarns, and I do love her yarn. I have used it in quite a few of my videos before. Today I picked up one of her tweed bases in the color Moonland. She did unfortunately stop dyeing yarn, but if she has any more available, I'll link to her shop website down below. Next up we have Yarning Town, located in Downing Town. So this one is located in a really easy to get to shopping center, and there's a huge parking lot out front, so parking is definitely not an issue here. Once you get inside, you're greeted by a huge selection of yarns, both from indie dyers and from larger brands. 
Now I wanted to name a few of the indie dyers they carry here, and they include Cape May Fiber Co., Dachshund Daddy Knits, Duck Fiber, and they also have their own brand of hand-dyed yarns as well that the owner dyes. Some of the larger brands they carry include Plymouth Yarns, Lion Brand, Cascade, and Ella Ray. On the day I visited, they were having a trunk show for Sunset Fiber Company, which is a dyer out of Lancaster County. It was also Pie Day, March 14th, so one of the exclusive colorways they had was this Sweet Potato Pie colorway, and I thought this was just beautiful. So I purchased two skeins for a future project. Last, but definitely not least, is Pearls of Wisdom, located in Phoenixville. So this huge yarn shop is located around the back of a shopping center with ample parking outside. When you walk in, you're greeted by a large assortment of, I'd say, primarily accessories and kits when you first walk in the door. Then as you start walking down the hallway, there is a whole nother hallway of all of just sock yarn and tons of different indie dyers, including Spun Right Round, Lantern Light, Life in the Long Grass, a whole bunch of different ones. And then you walk into a huge room that has sofas and comfy chairs to sit in while you knit and just you're surrounded by yarn on all sides. So I'm not even going to attempt to name all of the different brands they feature in this shop, but if you can think of one, they probably have it. Visited the shop, they were featuring their special yarn crawl colorway, which was by Lilac and Vine Yarn Co., which is a Philly dyer. And this one was an exclusive. I loved the teals and purple combination, so I made sure to pick one of these up. Thank you so much for joining me as we visited all 16 of these Philly area yarn shops. I definitely can't pick a favorite, but if you have a favorite and you're a local or a visitor to Philly, please let me know what yours is in the comments down below. See you next time.